Today we're going to learn about classes and IDs inside HTML and CSS. So a couple of episodes ago we talked about how to style our HTML inside our index page and in this episode we're going to talk about something called classes and IDs, which are essentially a way for us to target a specific HTML element inside our pages in order to give them a certain styling. Now to give you guys an example about what exactly is different between using classes and IDs versus just going inside our style sheet like we did in the previous episodes and just target the h2 or the paragraph tag here. Now when we do it this way, just by writing h2 or paragraph, then we style every single h2 tag or every single paragraph tag inside our website, meaning that right now every single paragraph inside the website would essentially be green. So it makes sense that we should only do it this way if we want every single paragraph to have a certain styling or every single h2 tag to have a certain styling. But what if I want to just target one specific element inside my website? What I can do is I can actually go back inside my index page here and I can add a class or an ID to one of these elements here. And there is a difference between using classes and IDs, but let's just go ahead and stay with classes for now and then afterwards I'll tell you guys about IDs. So inside my h2 tag here, I'm going to say we have an attribute called class, which is equal to double quotes. And inside the double quotes, we need to give it some kind of name. So this name is going to be some kind of indicator that we can then target in order to style this specific h2 tag. So what I could call it could be index dash h2, just to give it some kind of name. And then I can then save it, go inside my style sheet, and instead of saying h2, I can then say punctuation index dash h2. Now the punctuation here means that we're targeting a class, which is somewhere inside our website, and the class name is index dash h2. Now when you use classes, you can't write index space h2, because what we're doing here is that we're creating two different class names. So we're saying we have a class called index and we have a class called h2. And yes, you can in fact add multiple classes inside one element like we just did here. So if I want to have one class that takes care of maybe the text styling and one class to take care of the positioning, then I could do it that way if I wanted to. And by using classes this way, we can then ensure that only this h2 tag has this specific styling. Now, of course, if I have an h2 tag later on that I need to give the exact same styling as this h2 tag, I could in fact create a second h2, write something inside of it, and then say we have a class equal to double quotes that then has the class index dash h2. So right now, these two have the same styling from our style sheet. Now another way we use classes which you guys should probably know about is if I were to actually delete the second h2 and create some kind of container. So let's say I have a div tag which is a container that we can then put stuff inside of inside the website and inside this div I have a class attribute called index-div or let's say I had some kind of introduction inside this div box I could actually call this one index-intro and then inside the div tags, let's say I have a paragraph tag that has some kind of text inside of it. it. Could be some kind of welcoming text. Now, if I want to target the paragraph tag inside this div, but I don't want to add classes to every single element inside my website, what I could do is since my container here has a class as index-intro, I can go inside my style sheet, go down to the bottom here, say we have a class called index dash intro space and then inside this element that has index dash intro we have a paragraph curly brackets and then we can give this one a color set to red like so if i go back inside my website refresh you guys can see we now have a paragraph that is red so just to show you guys we can actually target elements inside an element that has a class inside of it without having to give this specific paragraph a class in order to target this specific paragraph. The basic thing we're doing here is that we're saying that every single paragraph inside this specific container should have this styling here. So now we talked a bit about classes inside HTML and CSS, but we also have something called IDs, which are slightly different than classes, but can be used in very much the same way. So when it comes to IDs, let's actually go and create one here. After my h2 tag, I have a class, 
Then after the class, I'm going to create an attribute called ID, which is going to be equal to double quotes. And then inside the ID, we can go ahead and give it some kind of name. I could give it the same name as the class name here, or could give it something different, it's up to you. Then go inside my style sheet, and underneath my class styling here, I can actually go ahead and say hashtag index dash h2. And the hashtag is the way we refer to an ID inside CSS, just like we did with classes using punctuation. So when we do this inside CSS using IDs, we can also go ahead and style elements using IDs. So I could actually say color should be green in this case. I could actually go ahead and delete my class up here, go inside my website, and as you guys can see, now the top title here is going to turn green. Now, another thing that's important about classes and IDs is that when we talked about classes, I could in fact use the same class, copy it, and use it multiple times inside my page or inside my website. Now, when it comes to IDs, I can only have one ID inside one HTML element. Meaning that right now, as you guys can see, we have an ID inside my h2 tag that is named index-h2. If we were to add a second ID called maybe index-title, I can't do this because we should only have one ID inside one HTML element. Now the same thing goes for having one specific ID name inside one page. So if we were to copy this, the ID, and paste it inside my paragraph tag down here, we cannot have the same ID name inside different elements. So if we were to use an ID inside my paragraph tag, I need to change the name into maybe index-p because now they're not the same names. Now, if you were to actually do this inside a website and actually go inside your browser, it might not give you an error message, but syntax wise, you shouldn't do this inside your website. So usually you should stick with classes when you want to style elements inside your website. So at this point, you might be asking me, well, why should we use IDs when classes can do the same thing as IDs, but more? Well, when it comes to IDs, it also has a couple of things it can do that classes can't do. For example, if I were to go ahead and create a section down here by creating a div, which has content inside of it related to a very specific thing, such as courses, if I have lessons inside my website, then if I want to link to this specific section inside the website, you know, we click on a link and then it just takes you down the page instead of to a new page. Then we use IDs in order to do this because if we were to actually go ahead and create an ID, call this one index dash courses and I know we haven't talked about links yet but if we were to create a link up here further up the document and then say we want to link to an ID just like we did inside CSS called index dash courses then when I click this then if I were to save it go inside my website refresh if I were to click on the link up here it would actually take me down the page to where the courses section start so this is one thing that IDs does really well when it comes to linking to certain sections inside a website. Now, a second thing that you use IDs for, which you can't use classes for, is if you want to learn JavaScript in the future, then a lot of the functionality that goes into the JavaScript programming language does require that you use IDs inside different HTML elements. So we're not going to get too much into this functionality because it's JavaScript and this is a HTML CSS course. Now, if you want to learn about this, of course, you can go ahead and watch my JavaScript series or my jQuery series, which does use IDs in order to accomplish these things. But for now, we're not going to get too much into it. So this is what we use IDs and classes for inside HTML and CSS. I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time.